this is a family effort. You did this with your daughter, and this Central Park Five came out of a project she did at Yale. Yeah, my daughter, Sarah Burns, and her husband, David McMahon, and I are the three co-directors, producers, and writers. She had written a thesis at Yale 10 years ago on representations of race in the media. This is a progressive northern city at the end of the 20th century that's using the same sort of uh, tropes and buzzwords as the Jim Crow South in the early part of the 20th century when we lynch people for things like the, the crimes of the Central Park jogger rape case. Except these guys were innocent. They went to jail for upwards of 13 years. Finally, when the real guy came forward and they had their convictions exonerated, they've now spent another 10 years in limbo while a civil suit is making it slow. So wait, these things are usually settled out of court or they're settled at a trial within a year. We're now approaching the 10-year mark. The city's put the slows on it. And I'm waiting for the mayor to wake up and say, remind me again why we're protecting the reputations of cops and prosecutors oh. who made a mistake. What is the pushback? by the critics of Ken Burns here. Why are they so upset about this documentary? Well, I'm, I, the only critics that I've seen are, are those representing the cops and the prosecutors uh, in the city of New York. So I think uh, they never we responded to our many, many requests to, to participate in the film. We did our best. We bent over backwards, eliminated our narrator to make this the most journalistically pure of our films and asked them each six months to come and co comment, and they never did. I really that they couldn't answer any of our questions and so they've now done a kind of you know attack from the side the city subpoenaed all of our outtakes and records a federal magistrate has rebuked them and quashed that subpoena they're appealing it's part of a cynical attempt to just do what human beings have a hard time doing which is admit a mistake but in this case what's being held hostage right. are five human beings their families the cops and prosecutors who could benefit from this being resolved and all the rest of us who need to have a period put at the end of a long 24-year yeah, run-on sentence. It's, it's 24 years old. I mean, Come this on. is getting old, right? Come on. And these guys didn't do it. They were children. They've had their whole youth blasted. They're now in their late 30s, early 40s. And, and, and we're still sort of saying, we're going to pretend it didn't happen because they're black and brown. Mm -hmm. What is it, our, finally, at the end of the day, what's our... Oh, well, Sarah, jump clear, in here, Clearly, please. it's a journalistic effort, an investigative piece. Um, I'm curious also about just how it looks. What strikes me is how different New York City looks yes. then and now. Yeah, well, you begin to realize you know what it was this was the apotheosis of the badness uh, Ed Koch the mayor at the time said this was the crime of the century and that we were not to believe that we, uh, we say alleged perpetrators he said we shouldn't say this you know when we you hear their parents and their grandparents say uh, they're good kids they're not well they were good kids they hadn't done it and they would be exonerated only because the psychopathic sociopathic rapist murderer who did do it confessed mm -hmm. But the cops didn't have the courage to say, you know, we screwed up on this. We didn't entertain alternative narratives. The prosecutors lacking DNA evidence and only coerce confessions after 14-year-olds are held was with seasoned detectives it, for 30 Ken, was hours. Was it a matter of the time that we were in? This is 1989, it, The rush right? to yeah. finish it, the arrogance of guys saying we can make these kids for it. They Would this happen apart. today? Uh, you know, it happens all the time in America, particularly for black and brown kids. Uh, we have stop and frisk. We wonder how many times stuff has happened there. Trayvon Martin wouldn't be dead if his color of his skin was our color. You know, I mean, this is this is going on. And unfortunately, we employed in the desperation of our moment the same sort of languages, the same justification. And here is, in some ways, the worst victim. You know, this was where the term wilding came from. The real wilders were the media that went crazy with yeah, this but, but, and ran this story okay, with the assumption yeah, that Ken, they were drop dead guilty. Here is a fact, and I live this, the city's safer now than it used to be. Yes, it is. Yeah. It was not pretty. I'm not saying 1989 plus or minus three years, but there was a point here, whether it was Boston or New York, it was dangerous to go in the park. That's exactly right. You look at the action that had to be taken knowing it would never be perfect. Our criminal justice system is based on the idea, not just a presumption of innocence, but the ability to go and punish the person who committed the crime for the crime they committed. In this case, it didn't happen, and no one has offered these kids even an apology for what they well, went through. Very controversial. Years old. If you think if you got a child of your they were own, fourteen then. I didn't 14, know that. 14, 14, 15, okay. 15, and a developmentally challenged sixteen-year-old who was tried as an adult and went to the okay. worst. Okay. Well, you hear the passion there, Ken Burns, years. with his new effort, the Central Park Five.